In 1992, John Carpenter's Memoirs of an Invisible Man appeared. The US production had a budget of $40 million and pulled in the US only $14 million back. He was a big box office bomb and got most widely negative feedback from audiences and critics. The movie is based on Harry F. Saint's same name novel from 1987. And this is based on the science fiction classic by H.G. E. Wells. Invisible Man from 1897. In the book, like in the movie, someone gets invisible through an accident. But that's all when it comes to the similarities. The novel is by far not as silly as the movie and is more concerned with the problems that go along with being invisible. Chevy Chase is the Invisible Man, a hero like you've never seen before. Where have you been? Everybody's looking for you. When do I get the Invisible Man? In a movie like you've never seen before. We're the only people that can give you your life back. I can see through my eyelids. I can see through the top of my head. Chevy Chase. Daryl Hannah. Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Nick Holloway wakes up after a meeting in an office building and discovers that after a laboratory accident he has become invisible, as well as parts of the building. CIA agent David Jenkins discovers Nick and tries unsuccessfully to arrest him. From now on CIA agents try constantly to catch the invisible man to use him as a test object. But Nick's thoughts are primarily with Alice, in which he fell in love before the accident happened. The movie is primarily a romance and a comedy, and that's its biggest problem. The script was originally developed for comedy specialist Ivan Reitman and Carpenter was just the last minute replacement. He does not work as a thriller nor as a comedy and for sure not as a romance since he is simply too inconsistent and does not follow any direction to the end. The result is a silly Jeffy Chase show with very good effects but completely uninteresting story. Good morning sir, your team's in earlier today. Something special going on? Sorry Ed, you know the rules. Paul Verhoeven's Hollow Man appears. Sebastian Kane is an ingenious but also egocentric scientist. He makes himself invisible through face shifting and runs for reasons amok. Hollow Script Man became a moderate success at the box office, but for the most part was rightly panned by critics with negative reviews, which felt like myself the movie didn't take its chances. After a promising start, he turns quickly into an ordinary revenge crime story with very good effects. 
In the same year the TV series The Invisible Man came out with 46 episodes at 45 minutes in two seasons. This time a thief gets by accident invisible and this also applies at Will who thinks he touches. But since he regularly needs meds to avoid insanity, he has to work for the government. Which is conveniently the only source for the antidote. Ah sure. The effects are okay I guess, but the stupid plot sucks. In 2005 the animated TV series The Invisible Man with 26 episodes at 25 minutes came and went. The story revolves around around an of course brilliant but ruthless teenager who becomes constantly invisible when an experiment goes wrong again. Like this garbage which I didn't even watch for 5 minutes. the ultimate weapon. He was special forces. He'd been in Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq. He is the perfect soldier. It's held in high regard. He is... Right in front of you. How was that thing? A team of molecular biologists broke the code for human invisibility. How do you feel? I feel like I'm about to blast off. Something went seriously wrong. You find him. Now, an experiment gone bad has escaped Lost containment. and plans to erase an undetectable soldier. Everything in his way. You've got an invisible assassin out there fighting his own war. Who's, who's there? Don't you understand? I can go anywhere, see anything, anyone. I thought I saw someone. <laughs> I see what they do. I know what they're thinking. And you're not gonna stop me. In 2006, Hollow Man 2 is released as direct-to-DVD production. The movie is more like a remake than a sequel in which an elite soldier becomes invisible and is now chasing after the antidote which prevents his slow decay. For reasons, his former superiors deny it to him because script says so. The well-cast movie has passable effects but suffers from one-dimensional characters and an uninteresting, boring story. He is a real snowfest which better remains invisible. Jeff Lee Meyer's interesting 140-40-page graphic novel The Nobody from 2009 was inspired by The Invisible Man. The presence of a bandaged stranger in a small fishing village creates problems and disclosure of many secrets of the inhabitants. In 2020, Lee Wannell's The Invisible Man is supposedly a novel adaptation or pick as you wish, a remake of the 30s classic. Sure, that sounds believable. A woman leaves her violent friend slash crazy brilliant scientist who apparently commits suicide and leaves her a generous portion of his vast fortune. When a series of uncanny coincidences happen, she is convinced that her ex is behind it and tries desperately to prove that she is being haunted by an invisible man. He gets her falsely arrested for murder and tells her in the asylum through his brother slash lawyer that it is all about her unborn child. The horribly boring super cheap looking crap is once again a simple revenge, in this case a relationship story whatsoever, only on TV level. Completely from the point of view of a victim of an unnecessarily complicated ex-girlfriend controlled plan with fake suicide, lots of murders for no reason and many nonsensical twists pulled out of the ass, uh, I mean of course script, only to achieve at the end absolutely nothing. And this time with moronic chunky invisibility or weather magic suit which apparently isn't subject to any laws of physics, example given when it stands in the rain, doesn't seem to have any watch or air holes and always fails aka flickers when the script says so. Yeah. 